Hi again and welcome to our summit today. Maybe you are wondering why you can't see my screen and uh, my face in the web camera. I had some technical problems ago, so um, I can't share my screen today. But as I learned, that's the digital life in 2020. So um, yeah, I just want to give you a brief overview for today. The session for today is email marketing, its relationship management, and our speaker is Nicolas von Grebe. He is managing director at eWebit Marketing. Maybe you have seen or heard him before on stage, but we are glad that you're also taking part virtually with us, Nicolas. Um, as I mentioned before, the title is email marketing, its relationship management. As we all know, email is a key element in maintaining a relationship with customers and prospects. He will ex explain why and how you should improve your email marketing in the future. Now, I'm happy I can hand over to Nikolaus and you will hear, hopefully, me soon at the end of the session. And I uh, wish you a lot of fun and a lot of new knowledge for today. And yes, now you can start, Nikolaus. All right. Um, housekeeping. Um, I don't mind at all if you, if you um, ask any questions. So we have a question form, we have a chat. So if there's something which you would like to talk about or if you want to, um, to ask about something, just write it down. <clears throat> if I can answer it immediately, I will. If it will be answered um, in, in, in a short term, I will tell you that it will be answered in short term. And if I cannot answer it, I will tell you as well. And some things we might discuss at the end of the of the speech. Now, I don't know if you know that this is um, go to webinar. So there is an exclamation mark behind every name which is not looking at the screen at the moment. So I will try to make it as interesting as possible. So you will stay with me. Now the topic today is uh, email marketing and relationship management. So why? Why email marketing and relationship management? Well, obviously you will you will see in uh, in the speech. First of all, I would like to to start um, this session with a quote by Bob Dylan, who said, well, actually he didn't say it, he sang it. The times they are a changing. Now he said something in this in the in the lyrics of the song. He said. then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone. It's part of the, of the song. And I personally believe that focusing on email marketing at this time is something which can be done, which has been a, a very good idea for the last couple of years. But I believe if we don't change something about the way we do email marketing, we might be sinking like stones. Um, some of you will now think, well, what times are changing? Yeah, well, but, but why change and how is it changing and what exactly is changing? So we're not talking today about COVID-19 and um, the changes brought to marketing. So we're not talking about the, the breaking down of digital barriers. We're not talking about the acceleration of e-commerce and digital marketing in COVID. And we're not talking about a, a peak in e-commerce which has never been seen like that before. This is a change which is happening to all of us. You, you know the change, You've been, you feel the change because of the, the, the immediate pressure you're under in, in your businesses, I suppose. But this is not the one thing we're talking about. We're not talking about short-term solutions. We're talking about long-term solutions. We, we're talking about the perception of you yourselves and what you do as, as a business, which in most of your cases will be email marketing. So we're talking about firstly, obvious, countable, measurable changes, which we can perceive and look at, like data and technology. And we're looking at immeasurable, uncountable, but still real changes, which are maybe hard to describe, but only because they're hard to describe. They're not, they're not, not there. They are here. Like behavior and expectations. Specifically, your behavior 
and the expectations of the ones you're catering the email marketing to. Now, just to make it a bit more clear, data, if I talk about data, I'm not talking about solely about CRM data or what I call control data, email addresses, CRM data, transactional data, business intelligence, behavioral data. And I'm talking about this, but I'm also talking about the other data, content data, picture, text, stories, which are in product information, which might be in your shop systems, recommendations, behavioral data, which is being recorded and can be used. So the, these kinds of data have changed in the last couple of years. We have much, much more data. Everyone knows we have much more data. The question is, what do you do about it? And apart from data, we will be talking about technology and the changes in technology. You might know this graphic from chiefmartech.com, the market technology landscape. If you are in marketing technology, you might know this. And then you might notice and say, well, this is April 2018. This is not new. No, it's not. Why not? Because I wanted to show you the, the change within technology in this picture, when um, 2000, Rapid E-Marketing was started in 2004. So 2011, the marketing technology landscape consisted of 150 marketing technology companies. Now, 2020, we are at something which is still called MarTech 5000, but it should be called Mar MarTech 8000 because that's the amount of companies being recorded in this, in this, in this graphic. And you might come from the area of email marketing. You might look at marketing automation or you might look at CRM. But this is the amount of change and acceleration which you will perceive if you are working in this space. Well, so far for countable, measurable, perceivable change. Another change is expectations the way people look at what you do as a marketeer and how you, um, how you act. And um, earlier was perfectly all right if you send out the one newsletter because everyone was used to getting the print mailing maybe. But the, the way people perceive the internet through social media is different and only because you do it as a certain way, is probably the expectation might be a bit higher. So the expectation of our clients is changing and our behavior will have to change accordingly. What you see here is a, a metaphor I usually take looking at technology. Um, what you see there is a man who is trying to chop down a tree in a competition actually. And um, if you look closely, you will realize that what he has in his hand is a chainsaw. Apparently, he's, he's moving like he's using an ax. Well, it's Photoshop, so that's a digital change. Um, but this is a metaphor for the modern market here. We have tools to our, we can use, which maybe aren't being used as they could or maybe should in the expectations of our clients. So maybe we have to change with the change in technology. And if you would accept and say, like, yeah, there is something, there, there might be a need to change. But where would we need to change changing our email marketing? Well, there's a good and a bad news. Um, the change already started or it never, it never stopped. And I understand that some of you are not from Germany. That's probably the, the reason why I'm not talking German, which is actually quite uh, a thing for me. Now, um, there is something in Germany, which is called, um, a, a, there's a certain law in Germany, which changed a lot. And I want to introduce you to this law. But before we go to this one, we're looking at GDPR. Every one of you knows the, the, the GDPR changes of 2018. And um, you probably have seen emails like the one on the left. I'm a 
I'm an enthusiast of for cars, for specific cars actually. And um, on the 24th of May, the day before the, the GDPR was introduced legally in Germany, I received this message, which said, last chance to subscribe. If you don't, you will never hear from us anymore. Confirm or unsubscribe. Well, I didn't press any of these buttons. Neither did I confirm, nor did I unsubscribe. And what happened on the next day was, on the 25th of May, I received the next message from this company introducing a certain indoor car cover. So I didn't drop out, I didn't opt out, I didn't opt in, and I received this one. And you might, if you, if you have realized something like that two years ago, then you, it, it, it might be possible that you had a déjà vu. And if you think, well, what the hell is a déjà vu? That is the feeling that one has lived through the present situation before, that you have seen or done or realized something like that before. And this is something which happened 12 years ago in Germany. So what we realized, what, what happened to us in GDPR, everyone sending out messages, subscribe now, you will never hear from us trying to, to, um, to, to save oneself from maybe criminal prosecution because you don't have an opt-in. That happened in 2008, exactly the same thing because of something we had in Germany, which was called the UWG, das Gesetz gegen den unlauteren Wettbewerb, the German law, which is dis deciding if someone may send an email to someone which contains advertisement. So it's not about may I have the data as in GDPR, it is may I send advertisement via electronic mail. And to cut this very, very short, it is forbidden in Germany, as you probably all know, to send any unsolicited email with advertisement to anyone who didn't explicitly opt it in. But this is something which came to Germany in the year 2008. Beforehand, it's on the left-hand side, but this is details, it's not very important. It said, you may not do this without an, op without an opt-in. And after the 30th of December 2008, it said, you may not do this without an explicit opt-in, which have been done before. So if some of you think, why the hell is someone telling us something about a, a, a 12 year old law in Germany? Well, because it was one of the points where email marketing specifically in Germany had, a, had undergone a, 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 an, an immense change. Because of this, legal change. You couldn't um, just trust that your list might be okay or that someone may be opted in, but you had to prove, you had to be able to prove that somebody opted in. This was the beginning of the a specific double opt-in in Germany, which I believe was a, a Glücksfall, whatever a Glücksfall means in, 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 in English. It was fortunate in Germany because because of double opt-in, the, the specific, the singular email address of a person became much more precious because you, sh you couldn't just send an email to anyone. You had to ask someone. Asking someone beforehand is expensive, at least in terms of time. So this double opt-in changed something and it changed or it started a fundamental change which transformed the email marketing in Germany from sending out newsletters to marketing automation, from spray and pray and just sending something to everyone to permission marketing, from emailings, unspecific emails to lead nurturing because the address was expensive at this time. Beforehand, you just email marketing was a, a cheap alternative to um, mail advertisement. And as the price, the, the effort for gathering email addresses and opt-ins got higher, in, in a certain way, the price of email marketing became high. 
And um, so we decide as senders, as advertisers, when a specific message should be sent. But thirdly, we have the ability of triggering a message. So we didn't have to, we, we, there was no need to, um, to, to push for everyone, but we could trigger this push individually. And fourthly, we are able to target, to personalize, to individualize, to change the content regarding who is this message was, was, um, was sent to. Well, and that means we had the ability of combining individual specific CRM data with a communication channel which is able to send out fully individualized, personalized, one-to-one -one information. And that changed a lot. That changed the newsletter and the email marketing in general to something which you can is resembled here. So we have trigger campaigns, we have lifecycle marketing, omni-channel, um, marketing automation, lead nurturing, all these specifics of digital marketing started with the more expensive permission and that made um, email marketing evolve from the newsletter to marketing automation and content automation. And did this happen on all the channels? Well, if I would ask, is anyone in this, um, in this virtual room who has a website which is as individualized as their own email marketing? So do people who visit your website the different contents depending on where they have been before? What content, what um, data is available about this person? What behavior this, uh, is, is available about this person? And I, I, I believe most websites are still static. And why is that? Why would we have one content for every single visitor, although there is so much technology out there which gives us the, the opportunity of changing that? And I believe it is because we were able to afford it. We could get away with it. In email marketing, we couldn't. In email marketing, we had to change because of the law. Nobody made us change the way we build our website. But now, with changing behavior and changing expectations of our clients, there might be a trigger point now where we have to change our behavior regarding everything. But the one thing we have to change is our own behavior as marketeers and our perception. So now if you say, wait, what's wrong with me? I'm okay. So what's wrong with my behavior? It's not wrong. Your behavior is not wrong. Your behavior is perfectly all right regarding your perception. You perceive your customers and, and your job and what you do in a certain way. And because of your perception, you behave. And I think we need to change our perception. We need to change our perception of what online marketing in general is. And in most cases, online marketing is being perceived or seen as something which is similar to what you see over here. So it's there's some ways of getting traffic. And if we have this website traffic and people visiting the website or the shop system, we want to convert them. The classic conversion rate on a shop or a website is getting traffic to clients. And if someone became or bought something and in this, in this way converted, then we look for the next conversion. And now, if you, if you remember the beginning of this, of this session, I said something about email marketing and relationship. And if you look at relationships, then a classic relationship would be to change someone from being single to becoming a family. And this is obviously a very similar thing as getting some traffic on the website and convert the traffic into clients. Well, actually it's not. If you have this personal um, um, experience, 
there is a bit more between getting from single to family than to get someone from traffic to a web client, a uh, web client, a customer. If you try to, 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 to convert in terms of relationship and you meet someone who you've never, you've never met before, then there, there might be a first glance. Then there might be some words, first words, a first date, dating, so you see each other regularly, and then you might be marrying, maybe not. You might want to decide about kids, maybe not. And then you're right into a relationship already. So what is the most difficult part about relationships? Anyone, any guess, any answer? Anyone there? Well, in my understanding of relationships, the most difficult part about relationships is not building them, but keeping them. <laughs> oh, yeah, sometimes the first words are the most difficult part about a relationship, true. But if you get over this, um, of these cliffs, and you start a relationship, then in my, in my idea, staying together is the most difficult part. It's um, anyone who's in this session who's not married. Um, if you marry, if you become someone's wife or husband, you're not done. That's the beginning of relationship. And the staying together part of relationship is the difficult part. Now, if you think, so what the hell is this person talking about? I'm in an email marketing session and now he's talking about marriage. Well, in the context of marketing, um, we can translate a relationship and look at it and say, well, obviously there's not one conversion within relationships. It may be then there's not one conversion in, 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 um, in online marketing. Maybe it is how to get someone from unknown to known and how to get someone from being known to become a customer. And then maybe how to get someone who bought something once to buying again, so to change someone into a long-term customer. And if we look at that, we get to something like that. This is an 2011 graphics on email marketing, focusing on specifically the, uh, the question, how do we convert the website traffic potential, left-hand side, to become a lead? Because some people, if, if, we, um, if, you, if you look at um, surveys about um, online commerce, and people are being asked why they don't buy, then the usual answer is they're not yet ready. It's not the right time. So in a traditional way of online commerce, you, 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 you find your traffic and you try to convert them, but anyone who is not ready yet will be left out. So why not, if, we, if, we, if, we, if you meet someone um, in, in your personal life, and you, you find um, a solution for the first words, um, you wouldn't ask someone to marry on the first date. So why, why would we have to um, get someone to buy on the first visit? So is this conversion step from unknown to client maybe a bit long? Maybe we could shorten it. And shorten it would be unknown to known, which would be potential to lead. So the first step would be, how do we get someone to give us a permission, leave an address, a permission to track? And then, as soon as someone leaves the email address and the permission, everything we can do with an email marketing is open. A conversion campaign, a welcome campaign, um, a specific offer, maybe an offer which is um, helping with the next step. So from unknown to known, from known to a customer, maybe a, a, um, a, um, <laughs> a, 
a specific offer, a percentage off of a product to get more information, more information in terms of someone is giving me more data or more specifically more money. So we get someone from lead to client. And then the next step would be as in a marriage, relationship means staying together. Um, what, and, and there's a lot of studies saying it's seven times easier to sell something to an existing client rather than finding a new one. So marketing automation would give us the opportunity of selling or upselling and cross-selling to an existing client. And then ideally we'll get into a life cycle campaign where we offer automated behavior oriented um, need specific communication for this one single person. Well, as I said, this is an old version. A newer version with all the online marketing opportunities we have would be not unknown because nobody's unknown anymore in the, on the internet, but anonymous. But we, we know a lot already. If somebody is visiting your website, you at least know um, where this person is coming from. So you might have third party data. You might know what kind of campaign somebody clicked on Google so that they come to your website. If you may, you can get your first information via first party data. So a tracking cookie, a tracking permission. Secondly, certainly a specific permission to send email, for example. And then we get to know this person and put the data into, into CRM. So that's another way of looking at this different conversion steps. And then we obviously build something which is a good email marketing program, which is giving you a certain or different specific opt-in opportunities, web sign up, pop-up forms, um, maybe in the web shop, you get into a welcome campaign where you're receiving specific offers. Maybe these um, campaigns are triggered depending on your behavior. You get into regular communication, maybe a newsletter specific format, and um, maybe even into sales events, depending on your behavior. And I brought one sales event for you just as an idea. Um, this is a a campaign we built quite a while ago. I will ask you at the end of this segment um, what you believe when this um, email was being built. We're on a trade show. Um, hosts and hostesses were asking for email addresses and permissions for, for a specific product. And after this permission has been granted, they received an email which was personalized, dear Mrs. Thomas, uh, was individualized. You remember our meeting yesterday at the so-and-so booth um, the picture of the hostess and host was individualized. The, the signature was individualized. Um, it, it was a certain amount of emails which were being individualized, which were then being sent, um, triggered, regard, uh, depending if someone did register or did not register for this program. And this campaign was being built 2006, it's 12 years ago. And I, I show you this to, to, to make one specific point and argument. We're not limited by technology. We never were limited by technology. We're limited by our own behavior and by our own perception. We look at the change in, 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 in digital marketing and as long as we don't see or we don't perceive it differently, we will not behave differently. And our behavior is not hindered by technology. Technology has been there all the time. It gets easier now, but it was there. And if you say, yeah, I, I see a point, I would like to change something in my perception and maybe even in my behavior of the campaigns I'm doing. Well, then, we have to look at um, the client, not as a target for one certain conversion, but rather of building a relationship with our clients. 
And if you want to build relationships with our clients, we need fully individualized, personalized communication, ideally across all channels. So and to do this, we need some things. First of all, we do actually need a vision. If you say a what? A vision, which the great Steve Jobs, um, um, he had a lot of visions. And um, you, you, you might have, um, have seen the Stanford commencement speech, which was published 2008. In this Stanford commencement speech, um, Steve Jobs had three parts of his speech. And one of them was about something he called connecting the dots. He said, if you look in the future, you cannot see a thing. But if you look back, you can see all the steps you did, all the decisions to, you made, which brought you to the point where you are right now in your life. And if you want to develop a vision for your company, which you have to, and I'll come to this in a second, then the easiest way of doing this, or in my, in my experience, the not the easiest way, but it's the only way I know to develop a, a vision which is not hindered by technology and data. If you, if you work on your, um, on your vision for digital marketing of your company, you usually look at technology, technology changes and probably changes which have to be made within technology to receive, to, to achieve your goals. And you look at data. What you should do, in my personal opinion, is um, make a picture of the future. So you, you transform yourself in a potential future, maybe three years ahead of now. And you describe this future setting as if you were looking at it. And as, as, long, as soon as you have developed this picture of what you would, what you would expect from your own company, from the way it is communicating. Then you look back into your past, which is now your present. And then you can see um, the decisions you will have, have to make to get to this point where you are. So you, you make a Polaroid picture of a, a certain future. And from this future, you look back into the, into the past and you will be able to see, well, if I want a fully individualized marketing, Obviously, I will need some data. So what would I have to do to get this data? So this is the one, I think the most difficult and the most important part in transforming email marketing into something which is more relationship-based is defining a vision what um, and how the marketing measurements or the, 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 the measures of your marketing should should feel like for a client. And you will need this vision because you will have to, to make disruptive changes. You cannot. If, if you follow the, um, the logarithmic change curve of technology, the yellow one, the fast one, you will, you will get in some certain trouble because the, 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 the blue curve down there is the the ability of organizations and individuals to change. Everyone wants change apart from the person who has to change. And if we try to change in the same speed as technology is changing, we're not, we're not able to do anything anymore. We're just following the change. And yes, um, something like COVID is changing um, our behavior. But if you look at yourself and your clients, uh, your, your colleagues, you will realize that a lot of them are tired specifically this year. And um, if you work in marketing, you, you probably personally know someone who has something like a burnout syndrome um, over the last couple of years, because the change has been so intense if you work in marketing. So I personally believe we cannot simply follow technological, technological change. Our behavioral change has to be like that. We have to jump. We have to jump within the organizational change, the, the behavioral change, 
and if you if you want to jump you need a vision because if you cannot see where you're jumping you might jump in any direction so if we if you want to follow and use the opportunities which are being granted by technological change we need to change our organizations and our behavior if we want to change our behavior we need to do this once and then give ourselves and the rest of the organization some rest time with change so if you're changing continually people people usually don't cope very well with a continuous change so that's why i believe you need a vision because if you have a vision you know how to jump from one curve to another now that we have a vision we need in terms of transforming digital marketing into relationship management we need a team and a team doesn't consist of purely marketing person but we need marketing and communication if you also have communications as a department we certainly need sales i mean if you are working in marketing you know the the grand old tale of marketing and sales not getting along together well, it's true, but it's it's not appropriate anymore. Sales really needs good leads, needs sales automation, and marketing needs the input from the sales of an e-commerce, what the desires and wishes of the clients are. So we need to build a team from marketing and sales. And if you want to avoid to run into legal troubles after you built and, and, and deployed your marketing technology, please, pretty please, get the legal team on board. And um, regarding the, 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 the question who should have the budget authority on, 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 on marketing technology, IT or marketing, well, both. Marketing for the ideas and the change and IT for the reliability. Um, there's a reason why there are different people in different departments. So if you have a vision how your email marketing or your relationship management, your marketing automation should look like in the future, then you need a team which understands and is understands and accepts this, this vision. They have to opt in into this vision. And then obviously, um we have the part of data i mean this is it's not a it's actually quite simple without having information about who your clients are consolidating this data um to get you the answer the the one answer you need is who email marketing or cooking id cookie id what content id trigger when any system you're working on will need these three information what person whom should i send what at what time obviously also on what channel and then if we want to to, to build this if we want to be able to um oh, maybe i should okay. <laughs> actually enough time um if you want to build a relationship you need two things you need to, in a, a personal relationship. If you want to build a relationship to another person, um, you need to be able to, uh, sorry, there's a word missing. Wieder erkennen. Oh, I tried. Um, with, with a plan. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <Eva, laughs> <hi. laughs> yes, so? recognition. If you cannot recognize someone, um, you will start a, a, a discussion, a, a, a a, a relationship all by at the beginning again so if you we need to be able to recognize someone and then we need time because then we can start building a relationship on individual communication so if we recognize someone by email address or cookie id and we are able to know something about what we have done in the past which would be a trigger um, and in the other data then we need to deliver the content if you want to build a relationship and you only need you only know three words you will not build any relationship and this the same is is, is true for content management we don't need a a dump of content we don't need a bucket of content we need content we can work with 
So if someone is interested in a specific information, if, if someone needs a specific information, then we, then we need to be able to grab this information, build it into a transformation. For example, I, I don't care if it's your product management system, if it's an XML structure, an RSS feed, but the campaign management system should be able to take, to, uh, understand who is asking at the moment, what content is necessary, at what time it is necessary, and then pull this content and transfer it on the channel. Now we have a vision, we have a team, we have data, and we have technology. Most people who work in marketing didn't go into marketing because of technology or data. And people who receive a marketing an advertisement, um, a marketing message. They don't buy because it's being crafted automatically. They're not there because it was sent with the right technology. We need another ingredient in our relationship management, and this is ideas, stories, creativity. We have to, um, in a certain way, go back in advertisement and look at, it is, it is storytelling at the end. Now it is an indefinite amount of different stories we are telling at the same time. But if the story is boring, if the product is boring, if the offer is not interesting, it, it, it's no use. It doesn't make a difference if we, are, if we were sent with the right technology or if the data was crafted automatically, if it's not a good creative, creative story. So work. Now, Vision, team, data, technology, creativity. Okay, if you, you, you might think now, okay, it, it, there's something in there, but how do I get there? How do I start if I want to get to, into a position where the marketing of the future is not simply the newsletter or the website, but true relationship management? Well, first of all, you need to be, you don't need to be, you should be, you should be brave and proud because the expectations of our clients is changing the way your company will be doing business. And I personally believe if companies don't change their communication behavior, there is no future for this company. So embrace this as a huge opportunity of doing something great. Secondly, you, you need to connect the control data and the content data. Probably a lot of you do this already, um, but you should do this with a certain sense of urgency and you should do this with, the, with the, a clear goal. It's not about automation, it's not about efficiency, it's about um, um, effectiveness. The right message at the right time is making a different impact then the same message for everyone at any time. Thirdly, um, if, you, if you're new to marketing automation, if you're new to email marketing in its purest sense, which is fully individualized automated content automation, take it easy, take a deep breath, start with the first words, as Mark said earlier. The first words would be, for example, someone opting in into your communication and you simply start with a, a hello, a how nice that you're here, we would like to know more about you, be interested in the person on the other side. Fourthly, <clears throat> you need to get a team. Um, marketing automation and relationship management without a team is futile, it wouldn't want to work. So we need technology and creativity the one thing marketing is all about, a good story, to work together and you need legal and IT that it works consistently. And you need to, to look at these four areas um, if you want to transform your marketing. Organization and processes, as um, you, it, is, it is very hard to build an automated system if your organization structure or your organizational structure and the processes you have is still focused on building one piece of marketing and then giving it to someone else because marketing automation doesn't work that way. Um, 
and the process of someone looking at a piece of marketing and saying yes it is okay will not work in the future if the marketing content is being created and dispatched automatically so you need to change not only the department structure you also need to change the processes because you will not will not um, decide if marketing is good or bad on a certain piece of marketing but rather on the process how it is being created technology and data is self-explanatory technology and data is changing anyway mind and skill is not changing automatically the mindset specifically um, in the decision making hierarchy, hierarchical um, areas needs at some points more mind change to understand what these technological advancements are good for and what you can do with them and skill if you if you if you have talented people in your company you need to give them the education and the training so that they become skilled workers and kpi and reporting is is very important not only regarding the effectiveness of your marketing communication messages but rather in the way how you measure your success as a company if you if you measure the sales success apart from marketing success you cannot expect to work marketing and sales hand in hand so companies have to reframe their way of looking at success and how they measure success if they want companies um, not companies departments to work together and um, then there's as i had Steve Jobs earlier, there's one more thing. It's not about this idea of us or them, we as a company and they as a client. It is not about, do we have to change now everything to customer centricity? Is now the customer at the center of the focus or is it technology focus? And where am I as a person working in marketing? It is about the Everything we do in marketing is about the connection we build, the relationship we develop and maintain to other human beings. We might work with technology, but the recipient of our messages is not technology. The recipient of our messages of our marketing is a human being. That's why we need to, to put creativity and stories on the stage again. And then if you consider these certain steps, and reframe what you do. Then you look at the word CRM differently, and it's not a system or a, an amount of data, but it is relationship management and the relation itself, the relationship between you as a company and the people working in this company and your clients as persons. This personal human connection is then the focus of attention for you and your marketing. Thank you very much.